Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. So what does food mean to you? Join me this week. My special guest is food writer Amy Loeffler, and she'll be discussing many things food, but especially salt. Stay with me. And today my special guest is Amy Loeffler, and she is an award-winning food writer, so we're really grateful to have her on the show. And she's going to talk about a subject that uh, I don't think I've ever had anyone on talk about salt, other than like people mentioning Himalayan salt and all. But she, I know she has some really interesting stories. But first, I do want to mention, Amy, tell everyone about the award you were just chosen for. Sure, Maria. Thanks so much for having me on. Um, So I'm very excited to announce that I will be included in the next anthology of Best American Food Writing that is available for pre-order online. It will drop October 17th, I believe. Uh Wow, that's wonderful. Really excited to hear that too. And uh, I know you told me you we're writing about potentially a book about salt and a lot of interesting things about it. But I know we were going to talk about this incident in that happened in Italy, right? In the, what, what did you say? 1300s? Yes. Yeah. Thanks for asking about that. Um, so one of the things I love about salt is that it is in many ways, this, um, this mundane mineral that inhabits our daily lives. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, it's also very cosmic. They find it in outer space and they recently just found it um, on an asteroid uh, in in the journal Nature Astronomy. There there was recently an article published about that, um, which has major implications for um, life on or the study of life on Earth, because originally it was thought that um, comets brought water to planet Mm -hmm. Earth. But now there's evidence of actual um, NaCl, sodium chloride, being found on asteroids, um, which previously they were not thought of in that way. Um, but yeah, to get back to um, to get back to Italy here on Earth, um, um, what we're talking about really is the Battle of Chioggia, um, and uh, so this it was a very important um, battle in uh, really. Um, the formation of these two rival cities, um, Genova and Venice. Uh, so what happened was um, that there were salt stores outside of Venice in this little town, Chioggia, um, mm-hmm. which was basically like a small town, like um, planned on a grid. Uh, mm-hmm. And um, what happened was um The Genovese um, thought that they were going to very easily take this little town and march onward. Well, they were in boats. Um, They weren't marching, but and sail onward into Venice. Um, And this happened in June of 1380. And um, that's not what happened, actually. Uh, What happened was um, the Venetians put up a fight. um, And ultimately, the Genovese were starved um, out of the port. So um, there was, you know, a lot of language. Ultimately, when um, the Genovese came to um, Chioggia and they thought things were locked up, the Venetians tried to negotiate with them and they didn't have it. In fact, there's a very famous quote by um, the, I believe, the the, Geno- the Genoan um, military leader who said that we, we're not going to negotiate with you until we've bridled the horses of San Marco, which are the horses that guard. Um, yes. That, um, yes. So, um, so this battle um, was fought, you know, over trade routes and you know other things. But there was this, um, there was this small city that had very important salt stores, and uh, it was very important in Italian history because. Um, it really allowed Venice to emerge as a victor and um, and the the much larger power after that battle. Uh, so so in the in terms of Italian history, it was very significant and um, yes. very salt related. 
Yes, well, you you probably know that salt was used as currency, right? It was used way back. It was used as currency also, just kind of like gold or silver, you know, mm -hmm. it was used as currency. So it, it was a really, really important commodity. And so much so that in Florence, their bre the bread that they make in Florence, especially in the city of Florence, has no the tradition is when you go to Florence if you get the traditional bread it's bread with no salt because the people were oh. so poor at one time that they could not put salt in their bread so now it's a traditional bread and uh, people look for that bread just because it's kind of linked to the history of Florence you know um, I, I think that was probably when the de Medici's were under you know they were under the de Medici's and uh, no one had money. So, yes, it's very, very, very interesting, um, really very interesting story. Yeah. And in fact, just to piggyback on your comment, um, that yes. isn't where the expression like to be worth your salt. That's where it comes from, from how Roman soldiers were paid. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Exactly. Really, really interesting. So what I know I was looking at your background and you've written for lots of lots and lots of uh, different publications. Tell us some of the publications you've written for. Sure, thank you for asking that. Um, so recently uh, I have work, I have written for um, some local publications um, here in Southwestern Virginia where I'm currently based. Uh -huh. um, so the Roanoke Rambler, I wrote a story about how cocktail culture has finally made its appearance here in, in oh. Roanoke. Um, uh, because Roanoke is very much known as a beer town. There's a lot of breweries here. Yes. Um, and we have some really, um, you know, there's a lot of really nice restaurants here that are very much investing in their cocktail programs now. Um, oh, so that's why then there's this culture developing. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like nationally, I have also written for Whetstone magazine, which is um, where the salt article uh, came see. from for uh -huh. the um, food anthology that will be published in October. So, uh -huh. oh, wow. so that, yeah. So any like interesting, do you re have you, like, do you review restaurants or just like any other interesting topics that I'm sure they're all interesting because they're all related to food, any other trending something or interesting topics? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. Um, so something that is kind of currently the gem here in Roanoke, um, yes is a cafe uh called stock um and that is a, it's a cafe that really focuses on nordic cuisine um but it is actually housed in a refurbished fire station from the early 1900s um and it's also part of a very innovative business model that speaks to um, the furniture manufacturing industry in Southwestern Virginia. Um, and I, that article actually has yet to be published, but it's one of the more recent things that I have written. Um, and I think would be of real interest to your listeners. Um, Definitely. And, and so um, my, my perspective on that is that there's kind of this reimagining of like the furniture manufacturing industry happening in this very innovative business model that partners with a restaurant where guests can actually, um, you know, sit the tables that you sit at are the tables that they sell in in the furniture place, which is housed in the fire station. Which I don't is want to interrupt you. I don't. I don't mean to interrupt you, but this yeah, is just sure. Point. So do you think that has anything to do with Ikea? Because Nordic, Ikea, you know, and it's kind of like, you know, when you go there, you do um, eat there and they have everything. But anyway, I'm sorry. I'm just starting to think that could be. Yeah, yeah, no. And I actually, I joked with the um, chef who is um, a self-taught chef. His name is Jeff Farmer. He's um, been the force behind some very successful restaurants in Roanoke. Um, and he actually did mention that one of his customers came in and, you know, and I asked him the same thing when I interviewed him because I grew up in the DC area in the 80s when, uh -huh. you know, um, big box stores and 
you know, factory outlets were a huge thing. And yes. that was immediately what I thought of as well was Ikea. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, so um, it is funny to make that association. Um, but the uh, furniture that's made by this company called Texture um, mm -hmm. is, is actually um, made <laughs> to endure. Like it's very well made. Oh, uh, okay. It's not like the, I, yeah, um, it's, and, yes. And so is the food at stock. Um, it's Nordic focused. Right. And, um, but a lot of ingredients actually do come from um say the southeast like um mm -hmm. shrimp dishes would have shrimp from north carolina i know he also works with um a um a fishery where he sources sturgeon from um and that's marshall Berg farms in north carolina and then um I'm trying to think of some other some other things, but but um, the chef Jeff Farmer, his whole thing is he really wants to introduce people to caviar um, and not have it be viewed as this luxury item. So right, right. wow, so, that's yeah. interesting. So that sounds like a concept that they're maybe starting in Roanoke, and it sounds like something that because that to me sounds like a great way. You know, restaurants are their profits are really down. But, you know, you have a restaurant like that where it's not just focused on selling the food, you're also selling the furniture. And it's a whole concept, right? It's a whole theme with the furniture and the food and and uh, that it's in an, in an old firehouse, which is interesting, too. So um, that's really, really very interesting. Do you know of like, is that the only location where they're doing this? Because I guess it sounds like that's kind of the launching pad for that whole concept. Um, yeah, that's a very astute comment. Um, and um, I right now, um, the this location is the only location. Um, mm -hmm. It's very much tied to um, the local economy, and right. um, the company is very invested in um, providing good quality local jobs for yeah. you know, the Roanoke population. Um, yes. And, um, you know, and I toured the furniture factory um, last month and yeah, they have very dedicated employees who have been. Oh, so the furniture is made there in Roanoke. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. So it's locally yeah. made to furniture and food, which is great. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that de definitely, that sounds like a model, a business model that will some in the near future, I'm sure will be really popular and become replicated. So oh, that's interesting. Right, right. It's something, it's kind of a concept. It's not exactly new um, because, you know, big chains like restoration hardware. Like, oh, yes, that's true. They do. It's kind of the similar thing, but um, I think the thing that's interesting about the furniture company Texture and their relationship with the cafe and the hotel is that, as you stated, it's a very innovative business concept and very much um, wants to support the local economy in that. Right. Way. In so. that, yeah, and that sounds like that. That's what might make them a little different too. Other than it's more upscale than say in IKEA, yeah, <laughs> right. more of the local economy and the products are made, you know, are made local as well, which is definitely very, very interesting. So oh, that's great. I, you know, had not even heard of that, but that's interesting. So it sounds like, like yeah. you're saying, it's similar to restoration hardware, but it's a step above because then, and I'm not familiar with real familiar with restoration hardware so i don't know if they have like eating places in their stores but this sounds like then something kind of a step above the restoration hardware um, yeah um and it kind of is in the sense that like um and so they do in i i personally haven't visited restoration hardware eating but, places i know that they do the fun the thing that's really fun about texture um uh -huh. and the establishment here in roanoke is that they encourage people when they're at the cafe to walk because the furniture kind of experience room is right there so they don't mind if you take this very like 
red wine staining like glass of wine around and like sit on the furniture and hang out with your friends, um, which you can't do. I don't believe at restoration hardware. Probably not. I know most places don't let you do that. Oh, wow. Well, that's great. So you experience, like I said, I think it's a whole experience, the furniture and the food together. Mm-hmm. So um, that's You're exactly great. right. Yeah. <laughs> That's really, really interesting. I love that. I love that. So what any new projects are you so are you working on a book or that was that anthology that's being published in October? Oh, um, so yeah, so the anthology um is actually a collection of stories from um Mariner books. Um so there's my story, um Marion Nestle, who you may be aware of. Um you know, who is the nutrition professor at NYU, like she's also going to be featured in the collection along with a lot of, a lot of other like very fabulous writers. So I That's feel true. very privileged and definitely um, to be definitely. involved. Yes. With that. That's wonderful. So tell everybody where can they find like information out on it? So it's an anthology and you said that will be published in October. Yes. Mm-hmm. And if you go to, I believe it's, mariner books um you can um and if you google best american food writing um um, you can you'll you'll get a link to pre-order it Um, okay okay so so people can look there and do you have your own website can people find you anywhere um Yes, I do. Um, although I have been very remiss about updating my website. It's but just oh. really, I understand. I was going to say, I understand. <laughs> it is so time consuming. And when you're doing what you're doing, you just, it's like you don't have the time to go and update it on the website because you're busy doing, you know, what the website is talking about, but you have to do that. So I understand. So I was just trying to get away for people to, you know, to find you. Sure. Um, so my website is called Marinate on This. Um, okay. yeah. so, um, and I would love it if people would want to visit. Um, and you can find a way to contact me. Like I, I have, um, if you go to the web page, um, right. there's definitely my email is listed there if anyone would like to get in contact. Okay, great. That's great. That's great. Thank you so much, Amy. And con- much congratulations on uh, on being selected. That's really very, very exciting. So and hopefully we'll, we'll hear from you back in the uh, hear from you in the future also back again. Um, Because it sounds like you really find some very interesting food related topics. So I'd love to have you on again. Keep us posted on it. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're (laughs) welcome, Amy. Thanks again. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Maria Liberati Show. And thanks, as always, to my producer, Britton Roselle, and this week's special guest, food writer, Amy Loeffler. And you can find me on marialiberati.com. You can also find me at Instagram at uh, Maria Liberati, on Facebook at Chef Maria Liberati, on Twitter at Maria Liberati, on Pinterest at Maria Liberati, my Roku channel, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking by Maria Liberati, my Vimeo channel, Maria Liberati, and our new YouTube channel for the Maria Liberati Show. So if you're listening to us now, you can also see most of the interviews on the YouTube channel. And again, it's called the Maria Liberati Show as well. And you can also find my Gourmand World Award-winning books at marialiberati.com and on the publisher's website, Art of Living primamedia.com or on Amazon or anywhere books are sold. Until next time, peace, love, and pasta.